So, um, management of uh, head radius um, uh, fractures. We have um, uh, many classifications for uh, for head radius fractures, and um, um, actually, uh, it does not help me decide what um, if the patient needs surgery or not. Many unanswered questions by these classifications and its modifications. So. Um, when I see a head radius fracture, I ask myself a few questions. Did, did the head lose its buttress effect against the capitellum? Did the, is it a multifragmentary fracture? Is there any extruded fragment from, uh, from the head? Is it still supported by the neck or, or the neck lost its supporting function to the head, which is usually responsible for length, alignment, and rotation? Will, it, will the head be overloaded later on after fixation uh, because of uh, insufficient ligaments? It, it might be an axial overload or a valgus overload. Axial overload, as you all know, is the SX the instability, and valgus overloading by um, insufficiency of the medial collateral ligament. So these are the questions that we ask ourselves when we have a head radius um, a fracture. Of course, uh, what the patient, what what are the patient demands and expectations? Because it's very uh, according to the patient's demands and and his expectations from this fracture or from the modality of treatment he's receiving, uh, we can decide which kind of um, approach, which kind of treatment we are uh, offering the patient. The most common. Uh, trauma um, uh, modality of the radial head is fallen outstretched hand with a slightly fixed um, uh, elbow that overloads the anterolateral aspect of the, of the radial head. And the anterolateral aspect is originally the lateral or the posterolateral part of the head, which with pronation becomes anterolateral. And it buttresses against the, 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 the capitellum making um, uh, shearing forces on the unsupported part, unsupported rim of the head of the radius. So if, um, uh, if the fracture, if the elbow is fully extended, loading is, is more on the, um, uh, the uh, coronoid, but if in slight flexion, as you, as you see in, in this picture and, um, and, um, uh, and the diagram here, it's the, the load is usually on the anterolateral fragment of the head of the radius while pronating the forearm and flexing the elbow slightly. So in, in patients like this, when you, when you see a fracture like this and seeing the CT, uh, as, you, as you see here, there is no extruded part. There is no, it's not multifragmentary. The, the patient didn't lose the, the buttressing effect of the anterolateral part of the head of the radius against the capitellum. And also the patient had his, uh, his um, uh, ligaments maintained. There is no affection of the enterosis membrane. There is no um, proximal migration of the, the, uh, of the radius. There is no DRUG instability. There is um, a, a good percent of or a good amount of uh, pronation supination at least 30 degrees supination and 50 degrees pronation and comparing the other side didn't give any uh, difference so the ideal management for such straightforward patients that we need not to forget is the conservative management we don't need to splint these patients we just need to allow them early pronation and supination which helps a lot restoration of uh, function very early. Sometimes the CT is, um, uh, gives controversial um, uh, information, as you see in this patient. Uh, in, in, in one of the pictures, you, you feel uh, as if uh, the buttressing effect of the head of the radius, again, the capitellum is maintained. In the other picture, you, you see it. Um, um, there is a gap between both fragments. And uh, it's um, it's left to um, uh, the other considerations and the, the the clinical assessment of the patient. If if this is the only isolated 
cut that you see a fragment that is um, that's not supporting the the capitellum or most of the fragments supporting so it's it's a matter of uh, debate that you need to make the decision yourself with the, with the other variables sometimes it's helpful to repeat the ct in extension which gives uh, an idea if uh, if there is a posterior subluxation it will be more manifest with the elbow extended however it, there is many difficulties repeating the ct um, um, in extension especially in acute trauma but if it's possible uh, it will help us um, uh, decide in another patient um, uh, a young adult with um, uh, fracture of the head and neck of the radius and we ask ourselves the the same question did the head buttress lose its effect against the capital and the answer is yes it's a multi-fragmentary fracture however there is a big fragment with uh, with other um, uh, chunk uh, at the rim of um, of the radius there is no um, the, there is no support of the neck in this uh, condition and it's overloaded um, uh, if there is a valgus overload, it will lead to compression, uh, but we need assessment of the medial collateral ligament, as Dr. Safuri said. And um, uh, this patient is a high demand patient that needs everything uh, to be fixed. We decided the um, operative fixation by extended lateral approach. We de decide which approach we go, either Kaplan or Kocher um, interval through the extended lateral approach. We usually use both. Um, uh, intervals because we need to fix some of um, some of the fragments through a Kocher approach and the other through a Kaplan. Kaplan gives a better uh, distal extent of um, of the um, uh, of the fixation. If uh, if we need to put plates, uh, I, I uh, strongly recommend the Kaplan approach. We start the either approaches with uh, the identifying the supracondylar ridge and then uh, uh, Cutting the common extensor origin, um, elevating the the annular ligament, and protecting the the ulnar lateral collateral ligament, keeping anterior to the equator of um, the the capitellum, helps us protect the posterior part of the capsule, which contains the ulnar lateral collateral ligament, and then we manipulate the the fragment, elevating the the. Um, the depressed radial head fragment, and then um, buttressing the metaphysis over over um, uh, un under the the depressed articular fragment, keeping in mind not to um, um, damage the blood supply to the small fragments of the neck because it helps um, the proper healing, uh, as you see in this uh, fragment, and. Finally, we repair or placate the lateral collateral ligament complex to protect the, uh, the stability. And we achieved axial low profile fixation of uh, the head fragment. The second example is uh, this patient with fracture dislocation. And as you see, after reduction, the CT revealed malunited, um, um, malpositioned head and insufficient neck. The neck lot, lost its function as maintaining length alignment and rotation. And also there is the angulated head leads to extruded part of the head abutting against the, the lesser sigmoid notch. So this, this is a frank indication that we need um, uh, we need fixation and buttress the um, um, the the lateral column to to help maintain the stability. And after uh, reduction of the articular fragments, we uh, fixed the the head and neck fragment with plate. And as you see here, you see. And the metaphysical defect that you need to graft to to achieve a, a, a good healing, and we used also a columnar screw to support the um, uh, the high stresses that this fracture is subject to, and it went into an um, uh, eventual healing. The third case of um, uh, that needs fixation is the fracture dislocation. There is a very high load, high stresses. The vulgus and uh, and the axial overload of this um, uh, head fragment, 
was the determinant factor that that um, that uh, made replacement is the first priority or the first option uh, for this patient. And as Dr. Yes, as Dr. Yes has mentioned, it's um, um, uh, in the presence of medial collateral ligament injury. Um, uh, uh, we need usually to to achieve a stable lateral construct to help stability of these fragments. So we can use the bed of the uh, of the excised radial head to fix the coronoid process and um, to to repair the capsule to to its bed. So you need to ask yourself a few questions: Is the radial the is the head um, uh, still buttressing against the capitellum or not? Is it a multifragmentary fracture? Is it still supported by the neck, which is responsible for length alignment and rotation? Is there, is there an overload over the head of the radius, either axial overload or valgus overload? What are the patient's demands and expectations that might determine or alter your, your decision uh, making in, in, uh, in any fracture? Thank you very much.